Okay, we've got a toilet here. It doesn't flush. Absolutely nothing. Still gets water. No flushing. Diaphragm in there is gone completely. So, you get absolutely nothing there. Some of these you can twist the diaphragm off and replace it. It'll just twist and then you can get that out and you can replace the, the part that's gone. It's just a wee bit of plastic that sits in that square bit there. So, so uh, what we need to do now then is we need to replace this whole thing. So we need to take this off. It's a close couple toilet so we need to take it apart to get this piece off and probably all the seals in here will re need renewed as well. Um, usually when you take them apart they just don't go back together. Before we get started in this, this can be quite a tricky job, you can run into quite a few problems. I've tried to cover as many as possible, but obviously I can't cover every aspect you're going to run into. So before you start, watch the video and see if it's for you. It's no rocket science, but equally, if you don't have the tools or the parts that you need, it can be quite tricky. So you need to make sure you've got quite a few parts before you even start this. Uh, obviously you need a siphon, you need a seal, and you possibly will need uh, new coupling bolts. So it's good to have all of them just in case. It's good to have the coupling bolts just in case you need them. You probably won't, but you just you don't know until you start. There's also different uh, types of coupling system. There's somewhere metal plate. Uh, what you need to do is make sure you've got the same coupling system as I'm showing you here otherwise it's slightly different procedure it's not uh, crazy different but um, I won't have the details that you'll need to follow if you've never done this before it's quite an in-depth video uh, it should cover most problems that, you, you, that you're going to run up against and I hope it helps you out let's start the video we need to switch off the water, we need to empty this. Okay, we just want to switch that off. Now, I've just switched the water off. This is what you want to do is disconnect all the pipes uh, from your toilet. In this one, there is an overflow pipe and a water inlet pipe. So you want to just disconnect them both. Make sure your water's off, that's what I was doing with the ball valve there. If you've got um, a, a more modern uh, inlet valve, it will have a wee float, just push the float down and that will let you know if the water's cut off. There shouldn't be any water coming into your system. Down the, down the toilet. If we can get it off, then In this toilet, the side I'm working on just now, the coupling bolt, the bolt that holds the toilet onto the it holds the cistern onto the back of the toilet that was completely rusted um, and it took a fair bit of getting off probably took me a good 10 minutes to get it loose um, you can add a wee bit of WD-40 or something in there just to try and loosen it off uh, once you get it loose it's, it's, a, it's easy but generally these things are have been soaking wet for years you know you get a bit of condensation on your toilet that's what causes the rusting uh, and and sometimes the shear the shear off. Disconnect your toilet from the wall. 
it should be a couple of screws holding it against the wall. There might be a bit of silicon there. You just cut that with a Stanley knife if it's silicon onto the wall. I'm just putting a wee cup there to catch any drips for when I disconnect the water pipe. And that's it disconnected. And now I think there's a wee weep that the the valve is not shutting off completely. So what I'm having to do is re-shut the valve again because it's just slightly letting water through. And that's it manages to seal up. Again, these are some of the problems you can hit when you're you're doing this sort of work. Now at this point I lift the system off full, it's extremely heavy so just be careful if you're doing that. The best way probably is get a wee cup and scoop the water out as much as you can get out um, or a sponge, a sponge is ideal for that. So that way you know and make sure you've got, uh, you've got some dust sheets or towels down there to catch any, any water because you will spill some. And that's us, that's how you empty it. And just be very careful with it. Um, if it slips, then you can actually crack your toilet and smash your system, which would not be good. That's the old washer that seals the, the bit between the cistern and the, the toilet. And you need quite a big uh, set of grips to get this off. And then once you release that big nut, then it's pretty straightforward just to undo it. And out it comes. Now it's still attached to the handle there, but with that loose it comes off nice and easy. So the new one is very similar in, in, in that it's the same height and it'll fit into the system. Make sure that you, when you get one, it's the same height, they come in different heights. That's the new washer, you can see it's a big difference from the old one. Uh, the old one's been pretty squashed into shape and that's why you can never get them to seal again when you try and reuse them, so a new one's the way to go. So just basically put on your uh, washer and uh, you've got the nut there. So the washer goes on first, that's on the inside of the toilet. The rubber's always on the inside. That's it, just make sure it's located properly. Stick it through the hole. Now at this point, actually add the handle on, just slip it back through the wee, the wee hole that's there for it, so it should be the same setup as your old one, it just makes it a bit easier to do it while that's all loose, but you don't have to, you can add it in later, um, if you can't get it added on just now. So this is us back round the other way, now what you need to do when you're tightening this up is make sure that it's that that the actual siphon's located properly so that it's not interfering with the inlet valve or anything else in the toilet and that it's going to work, that your handle's working, the inlet valve's working. As you tighten that up, it'll want to turn. Um, as you can see here, it sort of turns a bit, so you need to hold it in position while you give that a good tighten. Now, you don't want to over-tighten these because uh, it's a nylon nut on nylon threads, so you can over-tighten them very easily. And then that's that's it, useless. So just up to hand tight and then a wee quarter turn. That's basically what you need till it's no moving about in in there. Now this big thing, just put it right over the whole lot like that. That should should sit nicely over the nut. So I just let it sit on, and that's it. If 
you have problems with the bolts uh, and they're rusty, this now is the time to replace them as well. Uh, actually, you should replace them before you actually put the siphon in. Uh, so it makes it a lot easier when you've got an empty an empty system there. So you just replace those bolts. It's like you can see there's a rubber, a washer and a, a nut. Uh, and on the other side, there's like a, a head and you'll have the same uh, a rubber and then a sort of metal washer. And the rubbers go against the ceramic. You never put the metal against the ceramic. It's always the rubber. And it gives you a, a nice seal um, between them. And when you tighten them up, uh, you shouldn't have any problems at all. And you can put them on quite tight. But again, you need to be careful because this is, you know, the system's uh, made of ceramic. And you can over tighten it and then crack it. So you've got to just, you know, use a bit of judgment and try and get it you know, just right enough that it's tight and not going to let water through. Now if you're worried about it, the, any of your tightening of the bolts and nuts, um, it's a good time while it's off, you can fill it up with water, like outside and then empty it. Okay, so we want to bed the, the new washer, the big washer on here that. So, and get the two screws through there. So, this is quite heavy. Let me just be careful. Oh my god. So, two screws in. And just six one. Like that. The rubber on first, mm -hmm. then the metal washer, and then the wing nut goes on. And just that order, tighten it up. Same for both both sides. Don't put them on extremely tight because you still want a wee bit of movement in play to make sure that your pipes are lined up. You know your inlet pipe. Just checking it there. Make sure that's lined up. The other side I'm putting on now, rubber, the metal washer, and the wing nut. And of course, you need three hands for this, it's quite tricky. And you can see there that the overflow pipe needs connected. Um, I'll do that in a, in a wee bit, I'll catch that once I've got the system tightened up. So. As you can see, I'm going to put it back to the wall and get it in the position where it was, and then tighten it all up. The tighter you make them, the better, and then it'll, it'll sit better. The tighter you make them, the better it'll sit, and then you can then put it back onto the wall. These should actually line up. Sometimes you just need to adjust everything just to make sure then it's all going to work. Now this uh, inlet pipe is, is difficult because it's a metal connector and it's going on to a nylon, a nylon thread. It's, you've got to make sure that's on the right thread otherwise you can rip the threads and then you need a new, if you, if you get it wrong, you'll need a new uh, inlet valve uh, for the water because uh, you'll rip the threads and you'll not be able to seal it up again. So that's one of the tricky bits is getting that. So that's it. Water's back on. I'm just connecting up the, the overflow valve and once that's connected it should be more or less working. It. I'm just adjusting the, the height of the water in there just by adjusting that ball valve. So you just adjust it by turning those threads. The, the more to the right it is, the less water you're going to get in there. So that's it. So now you can see got a flushing toilet. 
just put on the lid and that's job done.